On paper, yes. Since the First World War armistice, most observers have predicted a return to hostilities within a generation. The French especially, who in the 1920s built a series of concrete fortifications and weapons installations along the Franco-German border and beyond. The aim was to force any future invasion north through Belgium, where it could then be met with a concentrated force. And by May 1940, with parity achieved in the air, the Allies had the advantage in both manpower and tanks. But when the invasion did come, the Nazis achieved in six weeks what a generation earlier had not been achieved in four years. The capitulation of France. How? Firstly with speed. Crucially, the Germans held the advantage in radio technology, originally developed as a means to spread the Nazi propaganda message to German households, small and cheap radios were now fitted to every tank, motor car and infantry unit. Maurice Gamelin, the French commander-in-chief coordinating efforts on the edge of Paris, didn't even have one. French officers had to run between tanks, issuing orders. The second was to achieve what most in Europe, including many in the Nazi High Command, thought impossible. Whilst initially sending Army Group B north through the Netherlands and Belgium as expected, and hence drawing up the bulk of the Allied fighting force to meet them, they also had 1.5 million troops of Army Group A invade here, the Ardennes, a 4,000 square mile tract of dense forests, rolling hills, and small winding roads. The French had assumed it impenetrable. But it was not and its breach opened the way for German panzer divisions to sweep out into relatively undefended countryside, which they did at a rapid pace between the 15th and 20th of May. Fueled in large part by the thousands of tablets of crystal meth the German soldiers had been judiciously prescribed. And add to this confusion and indecision at the top of British and French politics. The French Prime Minister, having had his offer of resignation rejected at the start of the invasion, duly sacked his commanding officer on the 15th, creating a four-day absence of leadership, just at the most critical moment, as his replacement slowly made his way to France from Syria. Luckily, the British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain had already had his offer of resignation accepted at the start of play on the 10th, In short, the Allies were either too unprepared or too slow to respond. With the Germans having made it to the coast, the French army was cut in two. Attempts at launching any counter-attack slowed by the eight million refugees streaming down from the Low Countries, blocking the roads. And, having divided, they could now conquer. To paraphrase Paul Reynard in the phone conversation with Churchill five days into the invasion. They had lost before it had begun. Thanks for listening. If you like this, subscribe and comment below.